Hello, <coughs> my name is Finbar Lennon. Uh, uh, I am one of the undergraduate surgical tutors in the Matter Hospital. Uh, I co-authored um, my late wife's memoir, The Heavens Are All Blue. It was published uh, in early April 2020, just as the pandemic took hold. Um, while I was cocooned, uh, I uh, took to poetry. Um, this wasn't anything new to me as I had dabbled uh, in poetry most of my life. Uh, the collection um, contains uh, many pandemic poems. Uh, some are raw and personal uh, and some are about medicine uh, as both uh, my late wife Kathleen and I <coughs> were hospital consultants. While the collection has no specific theme, uh, two or three of my grown up children described the poems as <coughs> very bleak and depressing. So I want to correct that impression by reading two or three of them for you. So I'm going to start uh, with a short poem. It's a copycat poem uh, and refers to another poem called The Red Wheelbarrow, which was composed by a very famous American poet about a hundred years ago, William Carlos. Williams was his name, and he was also a doctor. And his uh, poem goes as follows. So much depends upon a red wheel barrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. That's the poem. Uh, so I thought I could emulate William Carl's William Williams. Uh, I have a green wheelbarrow in my garden, and my poem. I'm going to read them because I don't know them by heart. Uh, but this goes as follows: the green wheelbarrow. The green wheelbarrow sits upended against the dark west wall, waiting for work, knowing its hardy frame is undiminished by gathering age, its soft rubber wheel ready to lighten any load. So that's my poem. Um, and that's the first one. Now, the second one I'm going to read you is um, is called Zoom. And I've been involved teaching medical students for many years, but during the past uh, year, I have had to uh, conduct my tutorials through the medium of Zoom or Teams, whichever technology was used on the day. <clears throat> and I found this very difficult and very disconcerting because the students were able to see me <clears throat> And certainly in the Teams technology, I couldn't see them. And sometimes in the Zoom, I couldn't see them either. So that, that resulted in a shift in the power dynamic between the teacher and the student. And this poem uh, refers to that change. And it goes as follows. Zoom. How much closer to each other we become when we are remote and distant. Zoom reveals how much we miss the absent senses. In return, it opens up a world of sight and sound. No longer faces in the crowd, but full on screen. A subtle shift in hierarchy. 
more attention, less distraction. Apart from roaming hands and fingers, nearly always male who wish they would stay still. The seniors struggle with the system, knowing they are losing touch, a sense that served them well. The stage is full of extras, and so an even playing field for now. So that's the second poem. And the next one I'll read is about my experience walking around the, uh, the center of the city and the north inner city where the matter is located. Uh, and I did a lot of lone walks over the course of the last year. And I was always struck by the, the drug culture that is present, unfortunately, in the inner city of Dublin. I could see the sellers and the users uh, daily. They were very open uh, and um, didn't conceal what, in fact, they were about. So this poem is uh, called The New Normal, and it goes as follows. I am depressed, repressed, oppressed, and distressed. You cannot be all of them. Why not? They all end the same way. Have you been to the doctor? Why should I when I am not sick? But you are taking medicine. I'm not. I'm taking pills. What for? To wake up in the morning and to go to sleep at night. What is in the pills? Highs and lows. What if you stop the pills? I don't know, should I? Well, you are very odd and different. That's my normal self. I don't want to be like you and your friends who are all the same. Well, we don't need pills to keep us going. No, but you are a sad and sorry lot. Why don't you get a life and then you will see what you are missing? Um, okay, so I don't know whether you want one or two more. I will re read another one for you um, if I can find it. Uh, it is um, a poem. It's one that, that I composed in 20. 12, when myself and my wife were in Paris, she uh, was a consultant cardiologist working in, um, uh, in a provincial hospital in Navan. Uh, she had a lot of contacts uh, with the matter cardiology unit. So she knew a lot about the system. And while she was attending the Congress in Paris, I was having a coffee uh, in one of those fancy uh, outdoor cafes in uh, Paris. And the poem uh, goes as follows. Smoking in Paris. Salem and Winston are the incense of children, the only visible vice observed at the Boulevard Café near the Pont de Nuit. As boys and girls gather to converse, laugh and smoke, late afternoon in August, boys innocently kissing two male cheeks in welcome and natural without posture or guilt. All seven circle a small round table with borrowed nearby stools and inhale the plume. Two pretty teenage girls beside me, four cigarettes while I sipped beer oblivious of old man leaning to savor. The cigarettes quietly stubbed out on the legs of the wooden tables and disposed without notice. How long will it take before the warning on the packet leaps out and consumes them? That's, uh, that's another poem. And the final poem I'll read <clears throat> 
is a bit longer, but nonetheless, not too long. Yeah, you're, you're nearly ready to go, I'm sure, at this stage. But anyway, this is poem is about a medical condition, uh, which is mentioned in the poem. Uh, it's an unusual and rare condition. And um, for the students, it's really a quiz to see can they name the condition or do they know what it is? So uh, this is how it goes. And it's titled Acceptance. Acceptance. It comes when you least expect it. I found a long lost friend on email. Never heard of him before. Went by the title of HHT. Always in and out of hospital, losing something precious. I remember one or two during my time in surgery. Got to know because they were so rare. Can you help me, doctor? If only I could find the bleeder, I would be his friend for life. Little did I know I would for not finding it. According to the books, it was near the cecum. I was sure on one occasion I caught it in the act, filling the gut like a tap, stop and start. But when I opened and looked in, no spurter to be seen, hiding away below the surface. I removed a good chunk of gut and sent it to the lab. Nothing there, sir, after days of spying. So had to transfer my patient to a cognitive physician. Told me often more than one and can be anywhere. I told the patient I would keep in touch. He was a very clever bloke into prose and poetry. Not a great earner, but good for the soul. We started a line of correspondence. He taught me about semiotics and adventitious vowels. And I composed a sort of verse that was blank and free. Keeping up with him was a problem. He reminded me of all I missed about the joy and wonder of the conversation. As we tried together to make sense of less and more and who gets what and why. So that's the sample. And I hope you liked the readings. <laughs> and um, I look forward if I am requested to rejoin the surgical teaching team uh, to meet you all uh, sometime in the new term. Okay, goodbye.